Amen. Yeah, they're rocking it. What's going on, Love LA? How y'all doing? It's good to see you all. You had a good week? Yeah. Come on, let me see some hands. How many had a good week? All right. How many of you have some challenges this week? How many of you know that challenges is part of life? That's right. But guess what Jesus said? Jesus said, I've already overcome the world. All right? When you don't need Christ, you lose your mind over some of these challenges, you know? But when you know Christ, man, I'm telling you, it's like you just get the enemy in the face. And you're like... You know what I'm saying? You're like, I dare you. I dare you. Am I the only one that know this? No. All right, that's what I'm talking about. All right, let's give King Jesus a hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On my way, I was driving here. I, I was fortunate enough that um, I got a chance to minister at, at church early this morning. And um, I don't too often get a chance to go home and rest, but I did get a chance to go home and rest before I came here. So I'm fresh. Yeah. <laughs> and I got a fresh word for you as well. Um, why don't you turn with me to Jeremiah 29. Let me see them swords, everybody. I'm not just switchblades. Let me see your swords. I was thinking about that yesterday. You know, as I was preparing the lesson, I mean, honestly, how many of you own a Bible? I own like 30 of them. Okay, good, good. They're all electronic. <laughs> how many of you have an oxygen tank that you that you need in order to, to breathe? Anybody here? I see one. She's smiling. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Okay, the point is this. That we don't need oxygen tanks because God has provided oxygen for us. He knew that in this earth, we would need to be able to breathe this air in order to exist. Hello, somebody. So the same way you need air to breathe, you need this word to live. And if you even think for a minute that you are going to survive as a child of God without this word, I sure if you know this now, you better go get yourself a Bible. Now, by the way, I'm not talking about getting the Bible and bringing it to church on Sunday. How often do you breathe? Every day. 24 hours a day. Every second you are breathing. How many of you know what Joshua 1 verse 8 says? Anybody know? It says, this book of the law shall not, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. This is the promise. This is the promise that God gave to his children Israel. How many of you know about our, our, our brothers, uh, our Israeli brothers, our Jewish brothers? Mm -hmm. The, one, the very ones that even rejected Christ. Do you know that they are the chosen ones? Do you know that God gave them a covenant? Yes. A covenant that he stands by? And to this very day, do you know they still prosper? Amen. Even though they rejected his son, Jesus? And, and, and what I want you to understand is that God sent his son into this world 
to establish a better covenant. Amen. And with this covenant, he included you and I. Hey. But this is what is required. What is required is the same thing that he told his first loved ones to do. Okay? What did he tell you? To, what did he tell us to do? Excuse me? Follow the covenant. Now, who is our covenant with? Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Right? And so, it's very important for us to realize that if we really want to enjoy this life that we're in right now, we got to get busy, y'all. Don't depend on pastors. Depend on Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay? Matter of fact, when you come in here on Sunday or any other day, and I'm not the only pastor, by the way, because you know there are other pastors that come here. Okay? And when they come, when I come, what I say should be a confirmation on what God has already spoken to you during this week. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, hey, listen, y'all need to put me a check. And there's only one way to put me a check, and that is if you know the word. If you know the word, you'll be able to know, well, wait a minute, this pastor, he, he tripping. Because my Bible don't say that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't come here because, oh, I sound anointed. Because I know how to go through, you know, and I got a certain way to, to, to speak. And, it, and, it, and it's, it looks like authority. Excuse me. My only authority is in this word. Hallelujah. My only authority is the authority that's been given to me through Christ Jesus my Lord. Amen. But the only way you're going to know that is what? The word. the word. Okay, come on, let's go. Let's, let's get busy. <laughs> I, I told you I'm fresh. I tell you I'm fresh, y'all. Y'all ready? Okay. How you doing? All right, good. Jeremiah 29. We're going to begin with verse number 10, and we're going to go all the way to verse number 14. All right? Uh-oh, I forgot. Some of you don't have a sword. So what are we going to do? How many of you got a bulletin? All right. Well, guess what? We call that your switchblade. Any, any first timers here for the first time? There's one, there's two. Anybody? Okay. Three, four. Okay, watch this. The switchblade happens to have the Word of God in it. Today's message is right in there, the first page. The first page of your bulletin carries the Word of God. Oh my! That's why we call it switchblade because that switchblade can cut back. I'm, I'm, I'm both ways. Videotaping. You can take this. You can take this little bulletin. And you can the face of your enemy and said it is written. Okay. Okay. You ready to have some fun? Okay. Here we go. For thus says the Lord: After seventy years are completed at Babylon. I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm talking about. How many of you are ready to be released from captivity? How many 
if you know that you're either in or you were in captivity. It's time for your release. Okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you for this time to be able to experience your blessings and your love upon our lives. We thank you that as your children, we come to you and we pray to you and we cry out, Abba, Daddy, have mercy on us. We come to you and we confess our sins before you and we ask for pardon. We ask for your grace. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask that you would restore us. We ask that you would transform us into the image of your dear son. Now, Holy Spirit, have your way here. It may very well be flesh that is speaking, but ultimately you are speaking through flesh. And even right now, I submit myself to you, only to be used by you. There's no value in me except for you. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that not only do you speak through me, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would now anoint each person that is under the sound of my voice, whether they be in this parking lot, or whether they be in the surrounding buildings, or anywhere else where they may hear my voice. I pray, Heavenly Father, that not only will they hear, but they will become obedient to your word. And not only will they become obedient, but I pray, Father God, that they will embrace and they will be doers of your word. We honor you, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, today's message is titled, God has a plan and a purpose for you. At the lowest point in life, at the possibly darkest moment of your life, just at a time in which you may be at a place where you're about to give up because you have run out of hope. Everything that you have tried to do up until this point <coughs> has failed. <coughs> Every false promise that has ever been made has not been kept. But many of you have been punked. And yet, God wants each and every one of us, me included. I'm going to say that again. Me included. Why do I say me included? Because I'm not above you. flesh and blood just like you. Before I get a chance to share this message with you, it comes to me first. And I have to submit to this work. Oh, <laughs> you don't know my story, do you? You don't know that I once had to sit in these seats. Oh yeah. The same seats you sit in now. I sat in those seats. Not as a participant, but as a spectator. Because I was doing my time at Union Rescue Mission. Because of my 
disobedience. Oh, you don't hear me. Why, why, why do I need to tell you that? Why do I need to tell you that? Is there anything to brag about? No. But I, I got news for you. The Bible says you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. How many of you know that God is not a respecter of persons? And, and uh, I don't know if this is still, matter of fact, I think it is. At the Union Rescue Mission, uh, their, their, uh, their tagline is the way home. Okay? In other words, they, they make it perfectly clear. This is not home. I don't care how long you're here. It's not home. This is to help you find your way home. Okay? And I need you to understand that, by the way, I don't care who you are. Right here? Right here? This is not home. This is not home. Okay? Oh, I know you, your address is right here, somewhere in, in the vicinity here. But I got to remind you, this is not home. What does that mean? Pastor, talk to me. I don't understand what you're talking about. I need you to understand that this world that we are in, doesn't matter what condition you're in. And by the way, I'm not just talking to the people that are sitting in these seats. I'm talking to those that are volunteering. I'm talking to the ministers that are all around here. I'm talking to the praise and worship team. I'm talking to the prayer warriors. I'm talking to everyone. This is not our home. And because it's not our home, you need to know where your home is. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you shall be also. How many of you know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is preparing a place? For us. How many of you know that? So if you know that, why wouldn't you prepare? Why wouldn't you make the necessary preparation? Hello, somebody. Because you don't know when he says, okay, daughter, son of mine, it's time to go home. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just being very, 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 very real about this right now. How many of you know that I don't have time to play games? How many of you know that when I come here, I can't stand here and try to caress you? I'm not here to make you feel good. There's only one thing. There's only one thing that I want to do. And guess what? To deliver the message. That's all. Deliver the message that God has for you. And here it is. God speaks through this prophet. And in verse number 10, he's talking to who? No, 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 no. In Jeremiah. In Jeremiah. You weren't around, young lady. When this, when this book of Jeremiah was written. Israel. Right? So who was God talking to at the Israel. time? Israel. He was talking to his chosen ones. You got it right, by the way. Because are we not his chosen ones? And let me tell you about the chosen ones of that time. They were held in captivity. Oh, God help us. Help us now. I'll go back. I'll go back there. Where, where? Oh, Jesus, help me. Where, oh, Jesus, help me now. You might have to help me out there, Lee. Now, now watch this. It says here, after 70 years I completed at Babylon. Let's change it now. Let's change it. After how many years of being in captivity in Skid Row. Uh -huh. Come on now. <laughs> 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 Ooh, Jesus. 
For me, it was a year. It was a year. I spent a whole year in Skid Row. But guess what? While I was here, God was speaking to me. God was telling me that if you do it the way I tell you to do it, I'll see to it so you'll never have to come down here to live again. I come here at least twice a month now. At least. <laughs> I said at least. At least twice a month I come down here. I see you. I see you. I see you. I saw you when you walked in. Shoot, man, come on. I'm glad to see you too. Now, now watch this. Watch this. It says here, according to verse number 10, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. In other words, what he's saying is, oh, by the way, while you're in captivity, I want you to know that I'm going to keep my promise. I just helped somebody just now. I just reignited some hope into somebody right now. Okay? Uh oh, you didn't hear me over there? But you kind of quiet. I need you to understand that while Israel was in captivity, he sent his prophet to speak to them and let them know, I'm going to keep my promise to you. Because I have a plan and a purpose for you. Oh, Jesus, help me. So now let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to September 20 in the year 2015. Oh, Jesus, I love you. <laughs> Y'all excuse me while I have a good time. He says, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Oh, Jesus, help me. Woo! How many of you have been praying? Uh -uh, don't raise your hands. It's not time to raise your hands yet. How many of you been praying and you've been like God pastor God ain't talking to me it seems like God's not listening to me it just seems as though he's not hearing or even responding oh Jesus to my prayers Oh, you don't hear me now. Because see, let's keep it real. Oh, Jesus. The Bible says today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Right? There's a time when God knocks on your door. And if you don't respond, if you don't respond, let me tell you what would happen. God would say, oh, oh, really? <laughs> See ya. And he'll go take a journey someplace and go talk to the next person who will respond. Meanwhile, you're like, well, I was only kidding, Rod. Can you talk to me now? Only to find out that God is silent. Am I talking to anybody? With my Bible scholars, am I in the Word or not? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now God is saying, if you will seek me with all your heart, in other words, if you will get real with me, if you will come to the point in life where you say, God, no more games. Because guess what? That's what I had to do. That's what I had to do. I had to get to that point where I realized that, you know something? This is what I actually had to say. This is, I'm going to let your ease drop on my conversation with God. When I spoke to him, I said, 
if I died today, even though I know I would go to heaven, I would not hear you say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. I knew that. And because I knew that, I said, Father, I'm ready to do what you created me to do. Oh, you don't hear me. And the moment I did that, all of a sudden, they break. They break. All around. Oh my God. All of a sudden, I saw green all around me. Man, I'm like, whoa. The leaves are starting to. <laughs> I'm like, I'm telling you, I was in a dry place. I was in a dry place, somebody. Am I talking to any? Who am I talking to? And so, I want you to understand that as... <laughs> as I begin to open my heart to God, and get real with him. Get transparent with him. Because how many of you know he already knows about you? He knows every detail of your life. So what you hiding? Okay? Your best friend, your best friend, is not really your best friend. I need you to understand that there is a friend that's closer than a sister or a brother. And his name is Jesus. Now let's go to verse 13. It says, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Some months ago, I, I had uh, preached about seeking. Anybody remember that when I, when I was preaching about that? And I started breaking down, I started breaking down the, the Greek. What, what, what was uh, the meaning of the word seek? It was one particular word. I mean, there's different, there was different words, but there was one particular word that everybody here could, could, could uh, understand. <laughs> let, me, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you, okay? Y'all ready for this? When I looked up in the word Greek for, for seek, this is the word that came to me. I went, whoa. Here it is. Crave. I'm going to say it again over here. Crave. C-R-A-V-E. Crave. I got your attention now, huh? Because the majority, I'm not going to say all of us now, the majority of us know how to crave. Because we've craved something. We've craved something in life. Many, many of us ended up being here because we craved after the wrong thing. In other words, we seeked after the wrong thing. Ah. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone for now. Because I want to get a hold of myself. I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Now, 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 now watch this. Is it making sense? Okay, now, now, now here we go. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's telling you, if you search, he's, oh, let me change it. If you crave for me, I will release you from your captivity. Oh, Jesus, help me. How many of you want to get out of Skid Row? Let's be honest. I see some hands. I see hands that honestly want to get out of, out of Skid Row. Okay? I got, a, I got a brother that I know that um, he was staying at the mission. And he was like praying, he's like praying, 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 like, Lord, I gotta get out of this place. I gotta get out of this place. And so what happened is he got himself an SRO. 
across the street. He was happy. He got his SRO. And probably within one week, he calls me up and says, Pastor, I got to get out of Skid Row. <laughs> Anybody here stay at the Union Rescue Mission? Okay. I remember when I first went in there, I had to stay on the second floor. <laughs> Anybody know about Union Rescue Mission though? That the second floor, I hate to say this, well that second floor is hell. <laughs> I'm not gonna go through the details right now, but y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Don't go to sleep. <laughs> oh my God. And, and I'm praying, I'm like, God, get me out of here. So sure enough, I got out of, out of the second floor and I went to the third floor. And yeah, it was a hell, praise God. I feel you, I feel you. And so you go up to the next level, but then reality checks in and you realize that this ain't home. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sooner or later, you realize that this is not what God promised to me. Hallelujah. So, this is the question. The question is this What is it that God has promised to you? says here oh Jesus I love you he said for I know the thoughts that I think toward you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope now stop there let's first go back to the word thoughts when I looked that up I looked that up in the Hebrew and let me tell you what the word thoughts what it meant in the Hebrew. He says, for I know, he's saying, I know my plan, not yours. I know my plan for you. I know my purpose for you. So let me help you. Just like that brother, his plan was to get out of Union Rescue Mission and go across the street, SRO. But that wasn't God's plan. So guess what happened? It says here, he had no peace. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. Come on. If you don't have any peace where you are, it's an indication that you're not where you're supposed to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on now. I'm not going to tell you where I live right now because I don't want to seem as though I'm bragging. But I want you to know that I'm in God's plan. <laughs> and I'm in His purpose. And I want you to know that He has restored. Somebody better hear me now. He has restored back to me what the enemy has taken. I need you to understand. And, and guess what? It was just a simple adjustment. That's all it was. It was just a simple adjustment. Yeah. You all think you got to do something like, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this, I got to do that. No, stop jumping through hoops. Yeah. It just comes down to one thing. <laughs> How much time I got? Where's my, where's my, where's my, oh, okay. how much time I got? No, 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 I'm, I'm looking at my people over here. Okay, there we go, right there. Now watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a different direction here so that I can close this down. First of all, let me finish up. It says in verse 14, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Now, that's the promise. That's the promise, okay? Now, how many of you know that 
a covenant is a promise. Uh -huh. How many of you know that a covenant is a contract? Amen. Any any attorneys here? Okay, I got one. I see another one there. I see another one here. Okay, if you understand anything about a contract, that contract is binding. Oh, Jesus, help me now. Woo! I'm getting ready now. I only got five minutes to do this. And I guarantee you, we're going to knock this, we're going we're gonna to hit this ball out the parking. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna hit this ball out of the park. Okay? Now watch this. Turn with me to the Old Testament. Deuteronomy. <laughs> Deuteronomy, yes. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I know you like, Pastor, where are you going with this? Oh, just come on now, watch this. My God, my God, my God. He's an awesome guy. He's a my God. Deuteronomy 30. I love you, Lord. I love what you're doing right here today. Oh, Jesus. 30 verse 15. Okay, stay in your book now. Those of you that have a Bible, those of you that have your Bible, you should be turned to that to this word right now. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. Here we go. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, and that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, mm, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. <laughs> But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. Just in case you missed it, Rewind. let's continue. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. That you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life. In the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Now, for those of you that are stuck, those of you that are stuck, those of you that feel they have been taught incorrectly, somebody said, oh, pastor, that's the Old Testament. That is the law. We're no longer under the law. I got news for you. Because if you turn to Galatians 4, 3, verse 29, it says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I got news for you. I just did my assignment. Come on. Yes, you did. I'm done. Put a period on Mission it. accomplished. Period on the lesson. Now it's your turn. Because the Bible says today if you hear his voice, how to nut your heart. He says, though they have ears to hear, let them hear. What the Spirit of God is saying. So let's break it down. 21st century vernacular. Your wrong choices has got you right here. I just read in the Word of God, it says that you must now choose. I'm not talking 
to those that are outside the covenant. Amen. I'm talking to those that are in the covenant. Amen. Come on now. Right? Amen. Am I right? Amen. Am I right? Amen. Because if you are in Christ, guess what? You're in the covenant. Amen. And so what he's telling you is this. You must now learn that your choices, Amen. your choices are very important. You must now make a conscious decision to obey God. All right? And what is he saying now? He's saying is, first of all, I want you to seek me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I told y'all earlier, you need to go get yourself a Bible if you don't have this. Because how are you gonna, how are you gonna, how are you gonna make the right choices if you don't know how to choose? Okay? Life is all in this word. Okay? And you've got to take this word and the Holy Spirit will show you exactly what to do. I got you. So now here it is. My praise and, treat, my praise and worship team can come up, come up now. My altar workers, y'all come on up now.